for the union. Hello, y'all. Uh. I was selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back. But no confusion, this a reunion. Hello, y'all. Welcome back. Get murder here. He counting money. He said, can me in the hell with rap. I'm only here to shit on niggas and piss on bitches. Welcome, man. I bought jewelry and bikes, nigga. Black Benzes and white figures. Now I'm out here and I'm looking for more chandeliers and light fixtures. Nah. I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a high nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I'm looking, say, take flight, nigga. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. Use code MACE, CAM, or STAT to get up to $250 in bonus cash with your first deposit and a special pick. It's the easiest way to win on Underdog. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Killer well, was good, man. Shit, man, same shit, different toilet. How you, man? Man, this is this is a good week. I've been having a lot of good weeks <laughs> since I was 22. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on a consistent good week roll for a long time, man. That's good. This is one of the better weeks, though, I will say. Yeah. Word. How you feeling, Stat? I'm feeling great. I'm happy to be back. <laughs> Next to y'all. That's what's up. And then I like the other shows, too. It's been fire. Shout out Trista. She's been doing her thing. Gotta give her a shout out. Okay. So it was announced TNT will match Amazon's $1.8 billion NBA media package bid. That means that the NBA must decide which network to move forward with. So from a viewer and a business standpoint, what do you guys think should happen? Um, me personally, I think they should stick with the people they've been with this whole time. It seemed like they've been um, broadcasting these games since about 1988. So to really change right now would be a, a great change. I'm quite sure that there's other companies that got the money. Everybody's talking about offering them more money. Um, even when you look at Amazon, Amazon Prime, you know they got a stupid bag for them. And just, but I don't know if I want to see the NBA on Amazon Prime yet. But I know I'm a I'm a stickler for tradition and things like that. So I like I like Louis Vuitton. You know I like the monogram. You know it, it is great to have the colors, but it's nothing like the brown. Louis Vuitton, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like you can have a little red here, you know. And they, I, when you think about great brands, that's why they're great brands because they're consistent. And that over time, you still see that same thing, no matter what colors you see Jordans in. It comes back to black and red. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the Dipset ego. You, know? <laughs> you don't want to see. You you could try other colors, but it's it's the red, white, and blue. <laughs> They're saying you can't compete where you don't compare. Yeah, you know, and I think I think I I think it will go well on Amazon. I know things are changing and things like that, but if you can keep it right there on TNT, I, I would I would keep it. Um, yeah, me personally, I wouldn't want to see a change from TNT, me personally, but uh younger kids are probably into Amazon and into what's going on online and uh <laughs> And look, yeah. look, thing that I like about Amazon, and I gotta give a shout out to Cox Cable as well. Um, you can find anything you want on there. And it may yeah. not be on Amazon, but you could type it in and it'll take you to, to whatever where it is. wherever it's at. Mm -hmm. And I do like that about Amazon and Cox Cable is that especially the cable, you could just say what you want to watch and it'll take you there. Um, whether it's on the cable provider or not. So I think that kids or I won't say kids, younger people are into Amazon Prime. Even when it comes to movies, they're like, I haven't been on Netflix in years or, um, you know, they'll go to Hulu or so many different streaming services. But I think that the number one streaming service, as far as anything is concerned, I could be wrong. I don't have any statistics in front of me. Is Amazon just for that simple fact that whatever you type in, it takes you there. Uh, but, like May said, me personally, I would like to see it stay with TNT. But at the end of the day, I'm old enough to see when the NBA was on NBC. 
Yeah. It was on NBC before it was on TNT and things change and people don't necessarily like change. But one thing about it is that the NBA is, is a strong enough brand to where no matter where it's at, people are going to figure out a way to watch it. Um, so I agree with Mace. Me, for my preference, I would like to see, see, it, uh, see it to stay on TV. Look, we seen Charles Barkley earlier, uh, not even earlier this year, a few weeks ago, maybe a month now, saying that he's retiring. Maybe he won't retire if it stays on TNT. Maybe they could keep the gang together for a little while longer if it stays on TNT, and we'll see what happens. But at the end of the day, we're also seeing uh, them bringing Jamal uh, Crawford in. We're seeing them bring Candace Parker in. We see them uh, bringing in different people just because Barkley has been on the record saying he doesn't want to work into his 70s. And they're trying to figure out different pieces that match and moving forward because Barkley, you know, he's made enough money and it seems like he's comfortable in life to where he's like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's a lot of times he makes jokes and that show is so funny and they're so spontaneous and they have a lot of fun running to the board, snapping on each other, talking shit about each other. When one person doesn't have a ring, a champion, he's not a champion. You can't sit to say, it's just very, very entertaining to watch. Um, so you don't want to break that chemistry up. But Barkley's been on the record saying he's always going to retire soon anyway. You know, he's on the show and it's even funnier when it's not a good game and he'll be up there and say, oh my God, we got to stay here till 1.30 and watch the highlights of this bullshit again. <laughs> I'm, I'm sick of this. <laughs> I, you know, you could tell he works probably. One thing about linear TV is that you have to be there probably three, four hours before to prep for a show. Then after with that particular show, you have to stay there, watch the games. Then after the game, stay for probably another hour, hour and a half to talk about the games. So to Barkley, he's probably like, ah, oh, whatever. But I don't think it's a lot of work if you're having fun. Um, and not just that, all the things that came with it. Barkley, I believe, has, has three sports Emmys just from broadcasting. Uh, he's been on Saturday Night Live three different times from that show, you know, this is not from him playing basketball. This is all from him being an analyst on TNT. So he got a lot of other things expressing his personality on that show. I would hate to see it go, but I understand if he does, but I would love for it to stay on TNT, me personally. If it doesn't, I get it. But I know one thing for sure, two things for certain, that they're gearing up for a legal battle um, because uh, Amazon's probably like, hold the fuck on, we had, we had a deal. You're using our number to bid against other competitors. Now that other competitors know our number, they can match that to where they might not have wanted that business out there. Look, this is the number until we have a deal. We don't want that number out there. Now what you're doing is using our number to get other offers and uh, Amazon's gearing up for a lawsuit. So we'll see what happens. That's a, that's amazing to think about because even if it doesn't, if it doesn't stay there, I mean, if it does stay there, are you are we ready to see like part of the finals on ESPN and then the other part on NBC? That would that would be totally um totally different because we're so used to seeing the um the finals where everybody can get it, you know. And certain people that don't have cable, they will they won't be able to see that game what if you, it's on ESPN. On NBC, what you mean? Oh, they're they're talking about dividing, okay. sharing, sharing different okay, games. You. Like you know, I, in the playoffs is like this game is going to be on TNT. Okay, got this you. game is going to be on 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 ESPN, and then the game seven will be over here. And got I you. don't think people are ready to do that. Miss certain games because they don't you. have cable. Yeah, well, to kind of bring like a different perspective, like so me, like I end up watching a lot more stuff on Amazon now because they have like Thursday Night Football on Prime. Now they have WNBA games on Amazon and like the two things that are becoming bigger is sports and gaming. And then Amazon also has that gaming aspect that they're bringing. So like if you are trying to bring in a younger audience, it does make sense because we can kind of get a lot of that at that one spot. But back to the point that you were saying, it's like, that's what we're familiar with. We're used to going on and seeing it on TNT. But as far as a business move, obviously it makes a lot of sense. But then going back to what you were saying about Charles Barkley, right? Do you feel like the show could ever be the same? Because he said regardless, he would still be retiring. So do you um, think that they could find a replacement for him or do you think that? It's going to be hard. Look, 
And I'm not shooting no names out there because nothing's guaranteed. It's going to be hard to replace OJ, RIP. When you have some good talent and good chemistry and people that know each other, um, not saying we have the relationship with OJ that Charles Barkley and Charles Barkley, Shaq, and Kenny and Ernie have, but good chemistry is good chemistry. It's hard to find. Even sometime when I see other people up there with those guys, it's just not the same for me. It's, I don't, I mean, I don't necessarily like it. Not saying that <laughs> I don't appreciate the new talent that's up there, but you could tell these guys played against each other. You could tell that they were in competition for years because they bring it up. It's times where, uh, Kenny and Shaq could tell Charles, please stay out of this. You don't know what it's about to go back to back and win a championship. <laughs> we, we, we're two time back to back NBA <laughs> champions. And then it's times they'll tell Kenny to shut up because you've never been a league MVP. We, we know what it takes to be a league MVP. And it's funny because they all, they don't, you know, they'll talk they shit, but I love that, that they can snap and shit on each other. And it's all like street shit to me. It's not, our street shit, but it's regular. I love that shit. So I don't know if it's going to be easy to replace Charles Barkley, but uh, it'll be interesting to find out. Look, it's a lot of shit that you don't like in the beginning where it's changed. And when the first take started, it was Stephen A. and Skip and Carly Champion and then Carrie Champion, sorry. And um, Skip left, Carrie left, and they had to yeah, figure it out. What happened to Carrie? She's doing, I mean, she's doing her own thing too now. Oh. She's been, she's right. like that. <laughs> First takes rank <right>, number one. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> okay, and niggas wake up. I mean, now we got a song jerking off the Molly Kerum. He got a whole freestyle how he wake up and just jerk off the Molly Kerum. Y'all can Google that if y'all want. Um, so, of, of course, it's other outlets. A shout out to Carrie Champion as well. I remember... Before I started this show, I was doing an interview actually for Bleacher Report. They was actually um, putting a sports show together and Carrie, they was mixing the match of NBA players and hosts and me and her happened to be on the screen together doing an interview for a no show on Bleacher Report. So she was real cool, super shout to her. But what I'm saying is, as long as you're getting your chicken, that's what really, really counts if you're making your money. But eyeballs count too. And when you got the number one ranked show, it gets fucking aggravating, I guess, for older people to be like, I want to see Carrie. I want to see Skip. Why, why are they going through this transition? It's fucked up. And after a while, if you like the show, if you're really a fan of Stephen A. Smith, who's probably the biggest person that I own it, you'll figure it out later. Same thing that happened with Max Kellerman on first take. They're like, yo, come on. He's getting rid of Max. He's getting rid of Max. And you got over it. After a while. So I don't know. I wouldn't want to see the change up, but it depends on how much you love Charles Barkley on the show with them and how much you love Kenny and Shaq and Ernie without Charles Barkley. But if there's if you're thinking about just the average NBA fan and Thursday or Tuesday, whatever nights it comes on, you're gonna watch because that's the channel the game comes on anyway. So you'll tune into the game and see what they have to say. Brother, you tune in before or after. That's a different story. Yeah, I, I really, I really think there's no way they're gonna replace um Chuck. They're not gonna be able to replace Chuck because it got to be somebody that you have that kind of respect for. I think it's the mutual respect, like you was talking about. These are people they battle with. It is is very few people that can match what Charles Barkley brings that have his accolades. Like there's some people that could talk, but then there's some people that got the credentials to back up what they're talking about. There's a few people, but I, I was thinking Carl Malone, just different people got, that. What about Robert Ory? Robert Ory couldn't match. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's good. That's why it works, because we have mutual respect. See? That was a good that was a good one. I was just saying, yeah, though, that man, was he, good. He can bring Robert on. <laughs> he can bring Robert on. He can't bring Robert on. Because <laughs> Robert doesn't have the personality. That's okay. what I was saying. He got okay. the big shot, but he don't have the big Big, the big personality, somebody who would be a good person. Matter of fact, that's a good conversation. Who would be a good person? A person that would really be good, but they're not going to do it because they don't have the time. 
would be Magic Johnson. He's a shit talker. I'm not saying yeah, he could Magic. be, he's not as good as Bobby, <laughs> but you bring Magic on, Mag Magic don't want to talk to none of y'all. You, <laughs> you ain't the Laker I was, Shaq. <laughs> shit. You cool and all that, but you ain't do what I do. And Kenny, we don't even need to talk to you really necessarily that much. Because when me and you was playing against each other, uh, you know what happened. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, and he got a personality, but Magic ain't going to do it. Magic's a businessman. Magic's fucking trying to get the Washington Commanders off the ground, the, the Dodgers and <laughs> movie theaters and Starbucks. What Look, about Magic, Dennis Rodman? Dennis Rodman, um, I think it'd be a little awkward. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I, I think it'd be a little bit awkward, man. I'm not you sure. You saw a stat when I said Dennis Rodman. She wasn't even there for Dennis, and she went like this. Yeah. <laughs> it could get cringy. Yeah. Yeah. It could get cringy with Dennis. Okay, Gary so Payton. Gary Payne has no championships, no league MVPs. He got one <laughs> championship. Yeah. He cheated at the end. Shout out to G. I respect your career, but when niggas is talking about shit, you have to shut up a lot of times. That's why their dynamics are so good. You got MVPs, you got champions, you got back to back champions between two different players. And, you know, I think this is a great dynamic. Okay. One last person before we go to the next. Yeah. What about Reggie? Reggie Miller? Yeah. He's on TNT, but he does the he analyzes the games. He's on the network already. Oh, but yeah. but the championships and MVPs are missing. <laughs> yeah. What right. about Mason Cam? <laughs> the, the thing about it, see, the thing about it is with, with me and I would love to. Shaq is that would my be man. Funny. Yeah, Shaq, they, they invite us. That would up. be funny. Yeah, that that would be a great. Actually, it'd be great because I don't care about. I, I'm a champion in my own right. <laughs> yeah, you know, hey man, we open for conversation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, we yeah. got a few MVPs, too. Yeah, 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 definitely. So I, I think, why you been on point last couple of days, man? That's a great suggestion. <laughs> Call them. That's what we do, man. Yeah. That's, yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. I'd like to see it, and I'm sure a lot of other people would. So in the comments, let us know what y'all think about that matchup. So moving along, Team USA has been putting up a fight the past couple of games. This game, they beat Germany 92 to 88. What did you guys think of this matchup and specifically LeBron's performance? Um, this, this game is like all the other games. It seemed like they're, they're content with winning the way they're winning. And, and it seemed like the way they're communicating is like they're right on time. You know, like we'll, we'll be ready for next week. You hear Curry saying this, you had a team saying this. So it's, they're not, they're not scared at all. Not that they should be scared, but they're not alarmed. You know, like me and Killer was saying, it is not the time for this. And it seemed like that's the way they're communicating. Like, it is the time. Like, we're right where we're supposed to be. You know how when people are fooling themselves? This is exactly how they sound. Um, but LeBron played pretty good. He, he didn't do anything I didn't expect him to do. I expect him to show up every game. I expect this team to um, partially underperform. If they don't have Kevin Durant, I think the floor is not opened up the way it should be for everybody to be the type of player that they are. And until they get um, Kevin Durant back, I, I feel like they're, they're one game away from, from being exposed. Old niggas. Joe. <laughs> this is not a <laughs> foregone conclusion, man. Look, this shit is a mess. If you want to just call it what it is, a fucking mess. Kawhi Leonard, he shows up out of shape. He didn't even finish the season. Two, three weeks into training camp, he gets sent home. You bring in Derek White with niggas, everybody's like, yo, how you going to bring in Derek White and don't even consider Jalen Brown? What's going on? Then we come find out it's three players from the, what's it called, stat? The, the, the team select. Team select. Yeah. Like, now we got team <laughs> Didn't select. Didn't mean to do that. They're yeah, still, yeah, yeah. they're qualified. Yeah, they're team, <laughs> exactly. We got team select involved. <laughs> now we got Kevin Durant missing all the preseason or whatever you want to call um, preliminary games before yeah. the mm -hmm. actual uh, Olympics start. Uh, we got Grant Hill saying that Jalen Brown isn't down because of Nike. Uh, it's it's a fucking mess. We got Joel Embiid 
talking about, yo, LeBron and, and stuff, they just names. They really like old now. Nobody really respecting all that. It's a fucking mess, bro. I'm telling you that right now. And then what we have is LeBron walking out after the last two victories. Talk about these the ones I like, the close ones. <laughs> this competition out there. Braun, you are Braun them right now. <laughs> you know, I get a lot. No, no, you know, I want a lot of people always <laughs> yeah. use this line. And I want my credit. Because when I say I get the computers pew and people want to make funny, now niggas about this dress is dressing. Braun is Braun. Yeah. The math ain't the math. math ain't. Yeah. Yeah. I started that. You was ahead of your, yeah, you was ahead yeah, of your yeah, tongue. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, so at the end of the day, Braun is definitely Brawning. But I don't like it. Um, I'm going to go on the record here. I'm going to go on the record. And I don't know this for a fact because this doesn't count if Kevin Durant isn't playing. They're going to lose the first game. They're going to lose to Joker in them the first game. I believe that game that they beat Joker in them. Joker in them was rope doping <laughs> saying, let them rock out. <laughs> or they feeling they self. <laughs> There's no way in the world you beat Germany by four and beat South Sudan by, by one point, which I meant to say yesterday, but we was getting into so many different things. And, and Trista brought up how the country is only 13 years old, et cetera, et cetera. But we have to get to the fact that that country or that team has no indoor courts. There's no indoor courts in South Sudan. Luau Deng is in the process of building one now. So that means practice racially the snow, 200 degrees, whatever. It is no <laughs> indoor courts in South Sudan, man. And let's, let's now think about this. I don't want to act like everybody's sitting there living in South Sudan. The South Sudan team, even though I'm going to get to Germany in a minute, a lot of these kids were refugees because of the civil war that went on. So some of them went to Australia. Some of them went to Canada. You have NBA players or uh, professional players in other countries who have played professional ball, but they're all refugees of South Sudan. So we're not going to sit here and act like they got everybody straight out the mud, no pun intended from South Sudan, um, but they're all from there. Even the coach that's um, coaching Luau Deng recruited from, he has NBA experience. So we'll start there. But at the end of the day, I don't like it. <laughs> it's no indoor courts. And we have professional all-stars, not only all-stars, superstars beating them by one. Now back to Germany. Um, this game was close to the end, too. And the U United States defense, they really picked it up. Anthony Davis came through with a few, uh, a few key block shots. Joel Embiid as well. But they're still slacking on defense, and it's, it doesn't look good. Y'all need Kevin Durant bad, and bad ain't even enough to say. Now, is he coming back? I don't, I don't know. I do know this. Kevin Durant knows his body uh, paws, so to speak. We sat there and seen him rush back with the Golden State Warriors and him tear his Achilles in front of millions of people. We actually watched that on television. And I don't think that he wants that happening again. This isn't a knee injury. This isn't an elbow injury. This is a calf injury that they said was a calf injury before and it ended up being an Achilles situation. Kevin Durant knows better than anybody how his leg feels and we'll see what happens uh, moving forward, but Team USA has till Saturday to put their final roster together, which is literally probably about four and a half days because they're six, seven hours ahead of us right now. Um, if you don't have Kevin Durant, to me, all bets are off. Now, LeBron James is doing amazing shit. Um, Anthony Edwards, one of the most arrogant players that we've seen in ages. They asked him after the Sudan game, how did y'all pull this off? LeBron James. LeBron, I never seen them give nobody props. <laughs> LeBron James. Yo, how did you, the US, LeBron James. After the Germany game, they're walking to the locker room. Uh, they ask Anthony, uh, Anthony uh, Davis, how, LeBron James. LeBron James. Every question, the answer is LeBron James. And Anthony Davis said he's still out here doing this at 55 years old. is amazing. You go to the, that's what he said. He said, you go to the interview, and you're asking Drew Holiday, how did y'all, LeBron James, 
LeBron James is LeBron James in right now, and it's amazing to watch at 39 years old. Yo, props to you, homie. It, it's fucking amazing to watch. Another thing is Joel Embiid. Sh 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 yeah, you talk, you talk, and then you got to lean on the 39-year-old to get shit done. And if you think he going to forget about that shit in the regular season, too, you better be ready whenever they come to Philly or when you go to L.A. Because trust me, he's not going to forget about the shit that you was talking. Uh, let's take this into perspective before I wrap this segment up, for me anyway. The man scored the last 11 points for the United States. The, the last 11 points in a tight game. They were down a point or two with probably four or five minutes left, if not, not less time than that. And he says, give me the ball and get out the way. This is what I'm talking about. This is the attitude. And listen, people gave LeBron a lot of slack early in his career. He don't want to take the last shot. He wants to defer to somebody else. He don't want to be put in that position. He'll give it to Dwayne Wade. He'll give it to Kyrie Irving. At, at 39, doing the shit that he's doing, watching it, it's amazing. Props to you, my nigga. He also outscored everybody on both teams at 20 points. So, like, that's just showing you guys, like, which we already know how great he is, but, like, he's about his business, doing what he's supposed to do. And then I did want to ask y'all, so what, from what we've seen at this point, like, I know we've talked about Kevin Durant, different players on the team. Is there anybody that you think should have been swapped out already? Or are you guys still like how the roster looks? On USA? Mm -hmm. um, we definitely spoke about this some days ago. Um, I think they really have to start start to change that that lineup up. Even um, I, LeBron is playing really good. I think they're a better team with him at the four than putting him at the three. I think even though he's scoring a lot of points, it's like playing with the oldest guy. It slows the team down for me. Um, and when I look at this team, they will be a more effective team, pretty much with him at the four. We keep saying this thing about, um, and, and what Ken was saying was true, but on the opposite end, it, you got to look at what it does to a team. Like sometimes people are great, but they overshadow the other players to such a degree, you don't get much from everybody else. So while you're, while you're saying, oh, this guy, he plays well, he plays well, he plays well, he kind of have the ball too much. And, it, and it, it messes up the flow of how the team should be flowing. Because if you put, if you put um, Tatum at, let Tatum bring the ball up, and you put Kerr on one side, and you put Anthony Evers, Edwards at on one side, then they will blow teams out because they will, they will be too athletic for everybody else. But sometimes you ever play full, and you got, you got an old nigga on the court, and you got to keep slowing the, the team up. So he could get his baskets and he's getting his baskets, but we could be a much better team if we were playing at a higher risk. And that's why the games keep being so close. It's not that they don't have talent. The talent is not getting the ball. There is there's a there's a mindset that we want to send LeBron off in a great way. And because they want to send him off in a great way, which they should, that's why they told him he's gonna carry the flag and all those things. They're trying, you know how you're trying to celebrate a nigga. It's like, bro, this ain't the time for that. This is the time to win gold and to and to put the best foot forward. And that's just what I was saying. It takes nothing away from LeBron greatness or anything like that. But we got some young guys that it's time to turn the league over to them, turn the team over to them. And you do that by putting the ball in their hand and telling them this is your team now. Until you do that. You're, it's a confusion on a court. That's just my take. Yeah, um, as far as changing the roster up, who would you who would you take off and who would you put on? Who do uh, you know? We sat there and talked about John Moran, <laughs> but I'm sitting there a real question: Who would you pick from America to replace anybody? I don't know, because when I was sitting thinking, obviously I was rooting for Jalen Brown, and I still think that he would be a yeah, great Jaylen, player. I, I was, okay, let me change the question. Outside of Jalen Brown and John Morant, yeah. I'll say those two. Who would you put on this team from America that we haven't had? I'm just asking. No, yeah, that's a good question. That's why I'm, I'm even just thinking of height and different characteristics. There's not anybody specifically that I could think of that would improve the team tremendously, unless 
a player did what, you know, MB did and had dual citizenship and decided to come, but there's nobody that I could think of specifically that would do that. Do you think that. Kyrie will affect this thing? Um, yeah, because I feel like Team USA has not given us the consistency that we've wanted to see. Like, they're just hitting the mark to win, mm -hmm. but we're not seeing... And I'm not expecting a blowout because these, you know, countries have been training a lot longer than we have. We've had four-day training camps. They've been training for months at hand, but... I think it would make an impact. I just don't know who I would swap him out for. Uh, uh, two, mind, two people come to mind and they're undersized. Pause. It's Kyrie Irving and Jalen Brunson, but they're way undersized for international play with this roster. Not saying that they wouldn't make a difference, but if we're sitting here thinking about Americans in the NBA or just overall, who are you trading out? We ain't, we ain't, we ain't really got niggas no more. Yeah. That's what's going on. That's my point. We're sitting here having trouble naming other people to swap yeah. out. We sat there and said Jalen Brown, John Morant, Kyrie Irving, Jalen Brunson, who's both 6'1 and under. Uh, who are we trading out? I'm sitting here earlier when I was thinking about this, and I'm looking at all-team NBA. What about Paul George? I like him on Philly. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think Paul George is better than um, Derek White? It's about fitting in. Pause. Is he going to be a better fit than Derek White? That I would go with Jalen Brown before Paul George. I think mm -hmm. Jalen Brown is a better defensive player today. Not saying Paul George wasn't one before, but I think Jalen Brown is walking around with a chip on his shoulder. And not just on offense, on defense as well. And uh, I, I'm not. I would. I would definitely swap the select niggas for Paul George. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you one more name. Okay, give me that name. <laughs> <laughs> that name. Yeah, yeah, I, would, I, I would say. I would say Cooper Flag. I'm. I'm mm -hmm. honestly would say that young boy projected first round pick. 2025. But at the four, who is he going to play over? He doesn't really have to play the four because he's a six nine versatile guy. So that's he may bring more versatility to that to that roster. I like that. I'm not mad at that, but I'm not going to take him because of what niggas did in practice. I need him to go to college yeah. Yeah. and show me what he could do in college, and then maybe a year in the NBA, and then say, okay, cool. Because not saying he didn't do his thing. Um, during the practices for the Team USA. But we need more of him. Pause. And sometimes it's like that. Look, LeBron was a sensation in 12th grade where niggas was trying to say he should go to the NBA in 11th grade. And I'm not disagreeing with you. But I need, me, Cameron, needs to see a little bit more than what he's doing in niggas in practice because it seemed like niggas ain't really paying that much attention in the preliminary games. Um, so I'm not against that. What's the other name you was going to say, Mason? Um, when you was talking about chemistry on the team, LaMelo La Ball. Um, he can't stay hurt. He can't yeah. stay a whole season. So if I'm the Charlotte Hornets, you ain't going a damn place. Can you finish <laughs> a season for us? <laughs> like my nigga, god damn. You, I know you don't want to go to the Olympics, nigga. <laughs> you can, we can't get 42 games out you. Now you want to go to the Olympics? Nah, nah. Sit your ass down, my nigga. <laughs> Wish you would try to go to the Olympics. <laughs> We cannot get a full season out, out, out of LaMelo Ball since he's been in the league, man. Shout out to LaVar Ball. He had a grandson that said he's going to be the best ball ever. <laughs> 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 he had the baby talking about the legacy goes on. <laughs> he said another number one pick. The baby's seven days old. <laughs> I fuck with LaVar Ball, yo. That's my nigga, but... um. I, what I was saying is, pardon me, I was sitting here before I end this real quick just to give an idea of where we're at as Americans. We're sitting there, and I'll just name this really fast. First team, um, All-NBA, for those who don't remember, is Giannis, Luka, Shy, Nikola, and Jason Tatum. So we got one American on that. Second team is Jalen Brunson, Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, Anthony Edwards, Kawhi Leonard. So we have four players that's on the second team that's already on the Olympics outside of Kawhi Leonard because he got hurt. Then third team is Devin Booker, Steph Curry, Tyrese Halliburton, and LeBron James, and Sabonis. Sabonis, I'm not sure if he's considered American. So we have 
eight of the t- second and third team already playing. Yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck we got in America? <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all it was getting scary. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to explain to y'all it's getting scary out there. And like I said, I, this isn't if if uh, Kevin Durant is playing because I'm not sure, and I'm not sure what the chemistry would be, but I really believe Serbia was roping doping them niggas making themselves feel good. And I'm going to say that they're going to lose the first game to Serbia. And then your final prediction, do you think they'll lose the first game to Serbia? I mean, they could. Them niggas almost lost to Sudan. And, and they, Sudan had a G League player that got a triple-double on them. That yeah. was a G League player not, that got that triple-double. And they played them second game. Yeah. So you got Serbia, then South Sudan, like, yeah. And if you think South Sudan, no poor, super, super dude, poor, they ain't licking their chops like, yeah, we got them niggas. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when I used to play and, and at a young, young age, and niggas be like, a team, like if I play with Gauchos and Riverside, beat us by one. You can't wait to play them because like, yo, now I got them niggas. I, yeah. yeah we, 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 I know what yeah, to do. Yeah, we on the same level. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Them niggas ain't like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then before we go to break, LeBron James was selected as the Team USA flag bearer for the 2024 Paris Olympics. This is voted by the Team USA and the committee. Do you guys believe LeBron James was the correct choice? Yeah, absolutely. This is what I was saying earlier. Um, when you when you have been as prominent as LeBron has been, when you played that 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 many times and and that to that level, you couldn't vote nobody else in. There's only one other player that would have been arguably the flag bearer. And I just for everything that's going on right now, this is just another piece of legacy that goes with putting LeBron in that place and not that he shouldn't be in that place. I'm I'm never saying that. I'm just here to always give an objective view because when you hear people talking, you always kind of hear the same view. So when people hear me, I don't want them to think, oh, you, you're hating on LeBron. I'm not hating on LeBron. I'm here to give the other view that people are seeing along with that other view that they're constantly hearing. And 100% he should be the flag bearer to this um to this Olympics. Who's the other person you said could have possibly been it? Um Stephen Curry. He's the only probably one that will look right carrying a flag. It, it's not time for for um Anthony Edwards to carry the flag. And Katie is too cool to carry the flag. Katie <laughs> wouldn't even want to carry the flag. He'd be like, nah, y'all niggas go ahead. <laughs> Rock. <laughs> you know? When, when we're talking about flag bearers, this isn't just, and I'm not talking to you, Mace, I'm just saying yeah. for the audience, this isn't just for basketball. Mm-hmm. This is for the Olymp- for the Americans, for every sport. Yeah. Swimming, uh, sprinting, whatever. It's, he's representing the United States for every sport when you carry the flag, being a flag bearer. So it isn't, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's the first basketball player to actually be the flag bearer, if I if I will not mistake, if I was reading that correct earlier, pardon me if I'm wrong. But um, let's take this into consideration. This is his fourth Olympics. To do four Olympics is really amazing if you didn't, um, if you're not really up on it, because you have to realize Olympics isn't every year. Olympics is four years apart, so over 15, 16 year time gap, um, he sustained the test of time to make this his fourth Olympics. I don't see anybody else who actually could have done it. If, maybe if Derek Phelps was still swimming or some shit like that. Um, Michael maybe, Phelps. Yeah, pardon me. Thank you, Murder. Yeah. Um, Michael Phelps was still swimming. Maybe somebody like that. Um, but to sustain to be in the Olympics this long, yeah, it's, it's amazing, man. It's really amazing. I don't think anybody else has this long of Olympic experience being in four different Olympics. Um, and I'm not even sure if he played. I'm, and I don't know off the top of my head if he he might have missed one. Like, nah, I ain't fucking with it this year. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just think it's a tremendous uh, honor for him. Um, proof of longevity. And I don't see anybody else who has been in the Olympics for this long who else could represent the country, no matter what sport it is, um, for the United States. And not only that, I think that he's probably the biggest global icon from the Americas 
uh, from the United States presently that's still playing. I'm not comparing them to Michael Jordan, to Kobe Bryant, anything like that. But as of right now, in an international phase, talking about internationally, it's no bigger name than LeBron James in the Olympics right now from America, my personal opinion. And to answer your question, so he's the first male basketball player. Okay. But previously, it was your girl, your favorite coach. No. Don. 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 Fuck, they talk about <laughs> Don. Yeah, yeah Don. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. So, that's yeah. dope. That's it was Don really dope. and it was Sue Bird. So those mm. were the other two for basketball. Sue, Sue yeah. what's up, man? Fire, so. That's dope. So we ain't never... And listen, so let me correct myself for niggas be like, yeah, Cam, LeBron's <laughs> not the first basketball player. <laughs> he the first nigga <laughs> to carry it. Shout out to Sue Bird and shout out to Don Staley. Yeah. Big, big honest uh, representing the country like that. Okay, so we're going to go to break, and when we return, we will discuss Coach Prime. Don't go anywhere. She called this thing about was toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free Why am I here this one? She wanna be free Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Looking ahead, the Packers will play the Eagles September 6th. Underdog Ooh. fantasy has Jalen Hurt. Woo. What's your team? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's people in Milwaukee looking forward to this game. <laughs> okay. It's not my team. It's not I'm not I'm not ready to leave Title Town. Just had to ask and clarify that. Okay. <laughs> Underdog Fantasy has Jalen Hurts at 40 and a half rushing yards. You have him higher or lower Boy, mace. What? 40 and a half rushing yards. Jalen Hurts. You have him higher Against, or lower. Uh, I'm going higher. I'm going higher. Okay. Um I'm going to go lower. They got my nigga from the Giants over there now. We ain't part of the Giants. Saquon. And speaking of Saquon, <laughs> Underdog Fantasy has Saquon Barkley at 74 and a half rushing yards. Do you have him higher or lower cam? I'm going to go higher. Yep, higher. Hey, and Jordan Love is at 245 and a half passing yards. Do you have him higher or lower mace? Mm. I think he'll be right around, right around that number. Um, I'm going to go lower. He'll be right around there. How much? 245 and a half passing yards for Jordan Love. Mm -hmm. Jordan Love said he ain't practicing until niggas get his contract together. <laughs> <laughs> So he's going to be low. I, I don't know. I don't know how much <laughs> practice he's going to have. I'm going to go lower because <laughs> right now Jordan Love say, yo, I'm not practicing. <laughs> Nigga said, yo, yo, the, yo, listen, this, uh, yo, Pete, think about this, right? And the answer is Lord for all my underdogs who use code cam. Go with law, because right now we got to think about this. And I dig it because football players' contracts ain't guaranteed. Uh, they get the short end of the stick for us uh, when it comes to guaranteed money and you got to do all these things to meet the requirements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But my nigga, you had one little good year. <laughs> now you putting niggas under the pistol? Yo, get my shit together or I won't be there, my nigga. You, look, Green Bay, I feel sorry for ownership and GMs because y'all got the curse. Y'all get them arrogant-ass quarterbacks. You niggas go from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers. Now, this nigga doing it early. He's starting off <laughs> early. Yo, get my shit together, man. I ain't showing up. I see that's the pattern here. Give me a new contract and I'll be there. He said he's not coming to practice. Right now, I'm going to go lower because I have no idea when he's showing up to practice because if I'm not ownership, if I'm ownership 
and I got to deal with the GMs who's dealing with him. I'm be like, maybe I can't fuck with you because you don't know how to talk to niggas. How we can't we keep going through this? How do you keep rec- recruiting, or pardon me, drafting these psycho niggas? I don't get it. I don't get it, man. And I know Brett Favre wasn't drafted there. He got traded there and all that slick shit, but he ended up there. Uh, I, this is wild. I, I, Jordan Love, you got to, you know, exploded the second half of the season last year and had a great second half. Well, calm the fuck down, bro. <laughs> calm down, <laughs> nigga. I get it, though. I'm not mad because they be doing football players dirty, but it's like they're telling the guy he's showing up. It's kind of wild, man. I'm going to go lower. Okay. Download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. So moving along, Paul Feinbaum said, if USC decided to move on from Lincoln Riley as coach, Deion Sanders would be the perfect replacement. This has started a lot of discussions of what if, so hypothetically speaking, would you guys like to see Deion Sanders at USC or do you think he should remain at Colorado? Nah, if Deion Sanders could get a USC, he got to go, man. He, he left Jackson State for this same reason. You know, when you can take the program to a better place, you can get more NILs, you can do better things for your talent. And we live in a we live in a um, portal society now. So you ain't got to worry about the coach moving. If the coach wanted to move, he could bring you with him. And a person like Deion Sanders, he he's he even though he's big, pause, he's bigger in a bigger market. You get what I'm saying? So if some players, if they if they had the celebrity that they had in another place, they would still be the same person. But I think if you put Dion in a L.A., in California, his brand triples, quadruples. It, it probably even go 10 times, even for his students, for the athletes. Because even if you take Travis Hunter and the people that play with him, if you push your door in, in a USC uniform, it, everything skyrockets. And, and it, it will be easier, even easier to get players to come to California versus to go to Colorado. So hypothetically, this would be a, a match made in heaven when you think of football. And they would never forget it. They would never forget it. He would never have to move again if he came to California because that's, you know, where he'd probably want to be. I don't know him, but there's nothing wrong with the weather in Cali and there's nothing wrong with the money in Cali. So every... Everything about it goes with Dion. That nigga Jordan Love won fifty million a year, yo. <laughs> yo. <laughs> yo. <laughs> yo, that nigga, nigga won fifty million. I ain't even knocking niggas. Get what y'all can get, my nigga. Get paid, nigga, young nigga, nigga, nigga get said, paid. Nigga said Trevor Lawrence and them niggas getting all that. Facts. <laughs> but then you sit there and look at niggas like, yo. Lamar Jackson, like, maybe I tapped out too early, man. <laughs> Yo, this is wild. Uh, so I just wanted to do a little more knowledge on him because I know he's doing our underdog picks. I'm like, how much the fuck this nigga want? He's in line for the 50 million a year, possibly. I spoke to Coach Prime. Shout out to Coach Prime. I spoke to Coach Prime the day before yesterday. And hey, listen, let me tell y'all something, right? I don't know what fucking magic Coach Prime got, bro. I, I'm a t- this is a real story, man. He called me two days ago. And Coach Prime told me, he said, he said, yo, you that nigga. Nigga, niggas can't do what you do out there. You you our nigga. This, this verbatim, you our nigga now. Nigga, you are on fire. Don't stop doing what you doing. It's just one thing I, I'm mad at you about. And I said, well, I said, Coach, what, what, what did I do? What happened? He said, I ain't like seeing that. I ain't like it because you our nigga. Now, we need you. <laughs> <laughs> we need you to be our voice on them shows. You don't go up there and do that. I said, but Coach Prime, we tried. We tried to uh, pitch to go on CNN, this, that, third, make it positive. They shut me down, tried to bring me up there. So I sold my, I get all that. I get all that. But you our nigga <laughs> and you our voice. So we don't need that. I said, I said, yes, sir, you, you're right, coach. I was mad niggas <laughs> called me about seeing that. I said, get the fuck off my phone. I 
don't want to hear what the fuck. I was thought I was in the locker room in Colorado. You get yes, coach. You right, coach. Yeah, you. Yeah, I'm your nigga, boss. <laughs> you absolutely right. I fucked up on that. Out of all the niggas that called me and tried to tell me some shit about what I did on CNN, I didn't give a fuck about what none of them niggas was talking about until I spoke to Coach Prime two days ago. So, Coach, I appreciate the call. I understood where you was coming from. And trust me, I get everything you, you told me. What I did it to say, maybe I tweaked it a little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But trust me, everything that you told me a couple of days ago, um, I listened to, it sunk in, and I understand where you're coming from. And thank you for the motivation. Thank you for watching. Um, thank you for being a fan of the show. And, uh, you know, always calling and giving some insight on your opinion because you're somebody I grew up watching, whether it's, baseball, whether it's football, whether it's being an analyst, now being a coach. So I just want to say all that before I get to what I'm about to say as far as USC is concerned. Um, right now, I wouldn't, I don't know the answer to that because he's nobody as far, I, I take very, I take a lot of pride in marketing. I think I'm one of the best marketing geniuses there is out there when it comes to marketing people, when it comes to marketing shows, when it comes to marketing myself, when it comes to marketing products, et cetera. I think I'm great at that. But if we talk about marketing, nigga, nigga, Dion's a marketing genius, B. You know, Dion come with the Jerry Curls, 80 gold chains when he played in Atlanta. That nigga come with the leather jacket so much, you ain't got to sell drugs to do all that, man. You know, that nigga is a marketing genius. And what Dion won't do is even entertain this, even if he's thinking about it right now. He will not tell you that um, I'm going to go to USC. This is something that he would do when it's time because you don't want that lingering over the Colorado program if you're going into the season after recruiting all these kids, after getting kids to come to the portal to change schools. Right now, that's not an answer, a question for him to answer because it just throws it off. Even when he left uh, Jackson State, he didn't do it until everything was over at the end of the season. Right now, we're getting ready to go into kids coming back to school in the next month or so. And to entertain that question would just throw everybody off because that's lingering over your head um, the entire season. Uh, what I will say is this. When I went to the few Colorado games, that I went to uh, last season. I thought, you know, the atmosphere was terrific. It was great. The stadium was incredible. I don't know how many seats that stadium holds, but I remember I went to the Nebraska game and I'm driving, I'm sitting in traffic and these Nebraska fans were there. They, they man, thousands and thousands of Nebraska fans. And they're walking, talking about, what's this little damn town we in? This is they stadium? What's this, the high school stadium? And I'm like, I thought this shit was dope. Now, when, when I see these kids saying that, I'm like, damn, how big is Nebraska Stadium? They shit must be two, three times bigger than Colorado Stadium. And Dion is moving up and up and up to me. So he's at Jackson State. Now he's at Colorado. And USC could be a bigger look. Like Mace was just saying, it could be an excellent look. Um, and taking them to the... Uh, you know, his brand over there. But I don't think Dion, me personally, I, I have no idea where he's at with this. I haven't talked to him about it. But I think Dion doesn't want to leave anywhere without at least leaving a mark. He may not want the whole thing um, when he's at Jackson State, but he's the swag champ a couple times. It wasn't like he just won a game or two and said, fuck that, I'm going to Colorado. And I know they had a a better season last year with him being there than the year before, but they still were under 500. I think Dion wants to prove that he can do it in Colorado before he even makes another decision. Do I know this for a fact? Absolutely not. But I just think that's the type of person he is, unless the opportunity is too great that he can't turn down. Okay. And then just to make it clear, this is just hypotheticals. People weren't really happy with Lincoln Riley's record that they had at USC with the past season with Caleb Williams and stuff like that, but they're just saying that Dion would be a good option just to make that clear. 
Okay, so moving along, Carmelo Anthony revealed that he had the opportunity to team up with LeBron, Dwayne Wade, and Bosch in Miami, but he wasn't comfortable being the fourth option in his prime. He said, being the fourth option on the team when I'm leading a team every single year, I don't know mentally if I would have been ready for that. So with that being said and hearing that quote from him, is that a move that you think would have been good for him regardless of how he felt about it? That's interesting because who said he would have been the fourth option? I don't even think he would have been the fourth option. But since we're dealing with it from a fourth option, um, this this was an opportunity of a lifetime. If you put Carmelo on that team, I think they win three. I think they win three championships. Even that first one that they almost, almost won and then Dallas ended up winning. Was that Dallas that beat them the first year? Yeah, I I think I think they win all three. I think they win that one. They win the next the next two back to back, and and he's a whole different player. His legacy is kind of different because he ends up having these three championships. I even think his career is extended if he goes to Miami. Um, he would have loved living there probably. Um, his child probably would be. B- not better, but um, growing up in that system as well. Um, I don't think he, the child would be a better basketball player than he is right now. He's doing phenomenal. And I just think that would have been great for his career. It would have been great for him. But him not being ready for it, he had the right to make that decision. He, he went for the money. He got the money. And then he just never got the rings. But that's the choice that some people make. Some people choose the rings. Some people choose the money and some people are fortunate enough to get both. Just to clarify, you were saying the one, the 2014 one back to like, if they would have won, they did lose to the Spurs. Yeah. yeah, I think that, I think they went three in a row. Yeah. If the same way, like Durant, when you put him on, when you put him on Golden State, they became an unstoppable force. If you put Melo on the team with LeBron, Wade, Bosch, um, and everybody else that was on that team, that that was impossible. It is impossible to stop that team because you anybody on that team could beat you. That was the USA team a few years ago. I agree with Carmelo. I don't think it would have worked out because if he's telling you he's mentally not ready, he's mentally not ready. Kevin Durant, to me personally, was mentally ready. Like I'm, I'm cool on Russell Westbrook. I like the way these Golden State niggas is moving the ball because he always talks about that when he was on Golden State. They play Mm -hmm. basketball the right way. They play basketball the right way. You know, I even was having a talk with Kevin Durant one time. And, you know, of course, I would never tell real business, Katie, but he's like, it's a right and wrong way to play basketball. And sometimes teams don't know the right way to play. And we wasn't talking about Golden State. We was just talking about period. But he felt that Golden State was the ultimate team within the team. (laughs) If so to speak, they pass, they move, they set the right screens, they're in the same spot, they're in the right spots when it's time to shoot, et cetera. Carmelo, if his brain isn't there, it's not going to work. It already took a year for D. Wade and LeBron James to figure out who was going to be the first or second option. As many years where Melo was saying he thinks he's better than LeBron, he felt he should have been the number one pick. He felt he should have been rookie of the year. Um, so to me personally, if his brain isn't there and his mindset isn't there, it's not going to work. Um, it's kind of like when Lamel- when Carmelo was playing with uh, Russell Westbrook in Oklahoma City, and he did an interview one day, and with this when Russell Westbrook <laughs> was uh, getting mad triple doubles, Melo did an interview and was like, yeah, he's stealing rebounds from his own players and shit, man. <laughs> and Russell Westbrook was like, man, I want to hear all that shit, man. I'm getting a rebound. <laughs> you know, when you say shit like that, <laughs> That it lose into other players. And if you already mentally think you're better than LeBron, you think you should have got rookie of the year, you think you should have been the first first pick, and your mind isn't there, then it's not going to work out, me personally. But I think that when you get older and you look back on certain things, at least you can admit that. Some people wouldn't even admit that to this day, that um, – I wasn't mentally ready to be a fourth fourth option. Like May said, who said he would have been a fourth option? But that would have been another thing to figure out. We don't know if D-Wade or LeBron's the first option. Okay, LeBron's the first option. D-Wade's the second option. Yo, 
is D-Way to Melo the second option? Well, Melo, you be the second option. I, now D-Way's like, how am I get to the third option on my team that I done bought niggas to? It's just too much to figure out for me personally. So I get where Melo is coming from. Would it have worked? I don't know. I think Mace is correct when I, he's saying them niggas was great on the Olympics, but that's when it's camaraderie. And I'm not saying that they wouldn't have had camaraderie on the heat, but they always in their prom. And they like, man, I'm still that, that nigga. You got to think about this. D-Wade took a backseat and Chris Boss took an extra backseat. They put him in, no, just, no, I don't mean this in a funny way, but they put him in the chow seat because Chris Boss was averaging 30 in Toronto. <laughs> you know, he was games, he's getting 40 something. He was that nigga in Toronto. And think about this. He had to dumb his game down tremendously to fit in with that. It's a lot of egos that got to be put into their side. And at least Carmelo was uh, man enough to admit that. So I salute him for that. But have it, would it, would it work? I'm not sure. Yeah. And then we've seen kind of what happened when there's too much good talent on one team, how the chemistry just doesn't mix all the time. We've seen it a couple times and even kind of this year with the Clippers. So we've seen it a lot. So shout out to him for being honest about it. But let us know in the comments what you guys would have think. Would you wanted to see him on that Heat team or do you guys think it was good the way it is? But that being said, that is all the time that we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. Nigga. Everything nigga super size, super size. Two big max Like when they doing them two for five